Welcome to Purpose of Life Ministries, where we want you to find your purpose, live your purpose, and share your purpose. Please join the service in progress as Pastor David W. Green Sr. shares a word from his series, Calm. If you're in the Indianapolis area, we would love for you to visit one of our three services on Sunday at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., or noon. We're located at 3705 Kessler Boulevard, North Drive in Indianapolis. Travel with us to the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings, chapter number 24. And we want to commence reading today in verse number 1. The book of Genesis, chapter number 24. The book of Genesis, chapter 24. We're going to begin there in verse number 1. We do solicit your prayers on today. The book of Genesis, chapter number 24. The book of beginnings. Getting there in verse number one. God has a word for his people on today. We do solicit your prayers and your amens. The book of Genesis, chapter number 24. Getting there in verse number one. And it's there that we find these words recorded. Abraham was now very old. And the Lord had blessed him in every way. He said to the senior servant in his household, the one in charge of all that he had, Put your hand under my thigh. I want you to swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I am living, but will go to my country and my own relatives and get a wife for my son Isaac. And for a few moments on the day, I would like to use for a subject or a theme, every good man needs the right woman. Every good man needs the right one. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Every good man needs the right one. Did y'all hear what I said? I said every good man, every good man needs the right one. Every good man needs. Yeah, that's right, all of them ain't good, but every good man needs the right one. Amen. Amen. Every good man needs the right one. We're continuing our series that we started that is entitled Family Matters. Family Matters. We started that series on Mother's Day and looking at the importance of mothers and how God gives us really more than one. As you walk through life, there will be various mothers he will put in your path. And when you look at our family structure in 2013, we ought to understand that our families are not what they used to be. Especially when you come to those of African-American descent. Because... Uh, 
If you go back in yesteryear, the family was the core to our community, to our neighborhoods. It was family. And man was a very important piece of that family. He played a major role. The church was built on this family. What we were demanded in our communities was based on the family and men were right there. But what has happened is that there's been a decay in the family and families are not what they used to be. And when we say that, uh, we have to say that men are not what they used to be. Can I get a witness in here? Matter of fact, statistics tell us that approximately 75% of our children today, African American children, are being raised by single mothers. Did you hear what I said? 75% of our children are being raised by single mothers. And then we have the nerve to wonder why we have issues in our community. If 75% of our children are being raised by single mothers, we're going to have a problem. Because now we're so far away from what God has designed and what he has instituted. And I came today to help us understand that really to be a good man, you know, they have that saying that behind every good man is a good woman. The truth of the matter is behind every good man, there's a good woman that's tired of pushing the man to where he got. Did I just say something to you? There's a lot of women that are tired of pushing the man uh, to where they are. It just passed, uh, election season, our own President Barack Obama took time prior to the first debate to acknowledge his wife, Michelle. He did not launch into national security, uh, gun violence stuff, economic issues. He took time and stated the fact that he would not be where he was if it were not for Michelle the wife that has stood by his side that is what helped elevate him to the status of where he was and, and somebody needs to grab a hold of this brother unless it takes a good wife if you get the right woman she will catapult you into your destiny did you hear what i said if you can get connected with the right woman she will catapult you into your destiny but if you get with the wrong woman, you'll be tied to complacency. I think I just said something. They either gonna help you or hurt you. So you gotta be careful that you get the right woman. Can't just get a woman. Hello, somebody. Amen. You don't just get a woman, you have a problem. Mm, I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. You got to get the right woman. You got to get the right woman. I, you know, brethren, if you if you choose with wisdom and God's discernment, God, who God wants you to have, see the right wife. Yeah, will be pushing you to the top. Did you hear what I said? The right woman, the right wife, will push you to the top. If not, the wrong chick will drive you to the bottom. I didn't say woman, I said chick. I switched on Hello, somebody. Yeah, I switched terms on it. Yeah, yeah. Some chicks will drive you to the bottom. Some of y'all brothers know I'm right about it. Because you've been involved with some chicks that drove you to the bottom. And some of y'all used to be the chick lady. Let me run on in the text. Oh, mercy. Turn to your neighbor. Hey, neighbor. neighbor. He's back.
Because he don't have a lie to me. But the truth is, sometimes you get involved in relationships who have, which have no depth to them. Amen. They're not going to catapult you anywhere. They're strictly going to take you down. And so you got to be careful with that. Abraham is going to help us on the day in Genesis chapter 24, verse number 1. It comes right from the beginning of the text, and they announce that Abraham is old now. He's actually 140 years of age here in Genesis chapter 24 and verse number 1. Genesis chapter 24, verse number 1. He is old. He's 140 years of age. He has something that is plaguing him, though, even though he's blessed. What is plaguing him is he wants a wife for his son Isaac and so you know here he is he's got this situation he's old and he's thinking about his son because his son has an anointing on him he has a purpose attached to him he has an assignment on his life I'm trying to talk to the parents in the place some of you got a son a grandson a, a daughter a granddaughter that has an anointing on their life and you see the anointing you see the assignment and you better learn how to pray for them y'all don't hear me here because you don't need them to hook up with somebody who knows nothing about an anointing that doesn't understand the assignment that's on your son or grandson's life. So, so we need to learn from Abraham and maybe we ought to start praying, not later, but maybe we need to start praying right now because we can see the anointing, the assignment, because Isaac is going somewhere. He's going to impact nations, but he can't do that connected to any witch. I change up again. <laughs> he said, now nah, you can see my son will not reach his destiny if he's tied to the wrong person. And so Abraham, he's got this burning and yearning inside his spirit. And I, I came to suggest to us today that we, we have messed up our children in a lot of ways. Because a lot of times while we're raising up our daughters to be brides, we're raising up our sons to be boyfriends. Did you hear what I said? Well, yeah, we, we, we're raising our sons, you know, just get some notches in your gun. They don't know anything about a commitment to a lifelong relationship. Why y'all look at me strange? I said a notch in his gun. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Do y'all want me to pause and hang out and break it down? No, nah, y'all keep it moving. That's what I thought we got. Maybe I was at the wrong church. Y'all looking at me all strange. You know what I'm talking about. But yet we're, we're, we're taking the girls and saying, now girl, you need to learn how to cook and you know how to clean and we, we need you involved in this activity and that activity and you need to know how to manage this and that. And he is on the video game. For hours at a time. Has no clue about being disciplined and serving as a husband and doing those pieces because he's being cuddled and, and we just sweeping his stuff under the rug. At the same time, she's going through discipline issues and she's being held accountable. He has no accountability. Then we wonder, how come ain't nobody getting married? How come these children are coming up and where's the father at? Mm, my God. And because Abraham did not want to be engaged in that, he's saying, God, he said, man, I got to start praying for my child. And I got to do it now because of the anointing, the assignment that God's will is for their life. And parents, you better wake up and recognize it's praying time for your children. You don't need to wait till they're 25. You need to say, right now, I got to be praying that God will send them the right person and they'll be the right person. And God will get to glory because you know what it is to go through hell. You know what it is to wake up and say, man, I'm with a complete stranger. <laughs> and you thought you knew them. Then they wake up, wake up one day and say, what the world? What was I thinking? Where did this alien come from? <laughs> I changed terms again. <laughs> and so, so, so Abraham is concerned about it. The Bible says in verse number three that he makes a covenant with his, with his, with his, his chief person, the person that's right next to him, his ace bone cone. He, he says, I want you to swear to the Lord that you will not get a wife from my son from the daughters of the Canaanites. Don't get one from the Canaanites. Among whom I am living. In other words, here Abraham, he's in the region of the Canaanites. And, 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 and he says, now I don't want you to get a wife from my son from somebody in the region because that region was cursed. They didn't believe in Jehovah. They didn't believe in God. He said, don't do that. 
Now, see, he, Abraham himself is blessed. He told us that in verse 1, but he's living in a cursed place. Catch that. You can be blessed and still be living in a cursed place. Hello, somebody. You can be blessed and be living in a cursed place. And so Abraham is like, hey, I don't want you to get one of the women from the cursed place because my son has an anointing on his life. And if, if, because my son's got an anointing, you go get him with a cursed woman, he's going to be cursed. Anybody here believe that the devil would want you to connect up with somebody that's cursed? That's why you better learn how to pray. That's why you better learn how to seek God. Because the devil will have you want to hook up with somebody that's cursed. And if you ain't careful, they, they, this is how you know. They're comfortable being cursed. Hello, somebody. There are some people who are cursed and comfortable being cursed because that's all they know. Hello, somebody. I'm, I'm from Canaan. I've been in Canaan. That's all I've been doing is Canaan. So I just think this is the palm diggity. I don't know that it don't roll that way. That there's something better out there. And if you're not careful, you hook up with somebody that's cursed, you will be cursed. And now you're comfortable being cursed. And now whatever dreams you used to dream, now you don't dream anymore. And if you tie up with somebody who does not dream to go to high heights and don't want to go to another level, guess what? Before long, you stop dreaming. Yes. The next thing you know, you don't have aspirations to move forward. Amen. You was growing up thinking, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to have my own business. Get with somebody cursed. You happy if you're even unemployed. Well, the first is coming. Got eight more days. Check gonna be in the mail. But that ain't what, that's not the way you used to process stuff. What happened? You got tied up with somebody who was cursed and then got comfortable being around somebody who's cursed. Because that can happen when you get involved in a relationship and you don't connect with somebody that's God's will for your life. And so Abraham is so concerned about it. He said, hey, man, I want you to make a vow. Don't go get one of these Canaanite women. For my son, my son got purpose. He got potential. He's going somewhere. He's going to speak to the nation. But he can't be caught up with the woman that has a curse. And when your child has got an anointing on their life, you got to pray such that they don't get caught up. Because the devil will be sending somebody who's cursed. Now, some of y'all could jump up and shout. Yes, because y'all know y'all at times, man, I pastor. I'm married yes, to him right there, pastor. Where was you at five yes, years ago? Yes, pastor. Yes, pastor. Don't let it happen to your children. Yes, Be real enough to your wife. Yes, Be real enough to admit. Yes, Hold it. You don't want to do that. The devil will send somebody that's cursed. Yes, and everything that you got planned and God has purpose for your life gets a major roadblock. All because you caught up in what you think looks good. Hello, somebody. Only to wake up and say, what in the world was I thinking? Because the devil sent somebody from Canaan. Say, hey, I know you're going to like this. You was looking at what? And they look fine. My God, but they were cursed. And you don't want to get tied to somebody that's cursed. Now, why y'all looking at me strange? We, I said, I mentioned several months ago, the Holy Hookup Committee, me and Sister Green, we're going to have to start doing that. I was preparing for this message. I was thinking about it. I said, well, some of these folk are picking psychopaths. And jokers with bad credit. Sociopaths. Well, shoot, they need all our help. They do no worse than what they picking. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. pastor's trying to help you. <laughs> you. You need a holy hookup. You don't need a hookup. You need a holy hookup. <laughs> Amen. Put that on your Facebook page. I'm looking for a holy hookup. I don't need a hookup. Hard of some of these folks I've been picking, Lord Jesus. Some of you, you thought about your resume, what you've been picking. It would send you into depression, wouldn't it? Yes. Make me almost want to get something to drink, Pastor. Now, let me move on. Verse 4. 
But he said, now here's what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. He said, Abraham said, hey, go down to my country. Go back to Israel. Go back to there. I want you to go back to the land of Judah and get a wife out of that one. Now the thing about this, what is significant about this, he's asking the man to travel 500 miles. He ain't talking about just go across town and find me a wife. He find Isaac a wife. He said, you gotta go, man, back to my home area. 500 miles to get a woman for Isaac. Grab this, brother. A woman, a good woman, a holy woman, a righteous woman is a woman that comes with sacrifice. You gotta go out of your way to find a good one. They're not, you know, sitting around everywhere. Now there's some stuff on every corner. But I'm talking about a Proverbs 31 one. They're not on every corner. Ladies, where am I at now? Do y'all know that the Proverbs 31 women do not just stand on every You got to make a sacrifice. You got to go out of your way to find a good woman, a holy woman, a Proverbs 31, a, a ruby. There's a difference. There's a difference, young men. And understand this, if it's too convenient, it ain't ready for covenant. I think I just said something like that. Brethren, if it's too convenient, it's not appropriate for covenant. If it's too convenient, y'all looking at me strong. You know what I'm talking about. You know, if it's too convenient, it ain't ready for covenant. <laughs> y'all looking at me, what are you talking about? Now, he ready for me, Mike. They ain't ready. If it's too convenient, it's not ready for covenant. Parents, teach your young men that. If it's too convenient, it's not ready for covenant. My Lord, there's a difference. Amen. And you got to be willing to make the sacrifice to get with a godly woman. And if it means, Pastor, I got to travel 500. I don't know how far you're going to have to go. But you don't find them on every corner. There's something else on every corner. Hello, somebody. Mm. There's something else on every corner. What's on every corner, Pastor? Well, in some of our neighborhoods, there are some harlots. That's for my King James people. Clean it up for y'all. Y'all didn't look like y'all was ready for me. Harlots. I didn't get my disclaimer earlier today. You know, harlots. Prostitutes. Some hoes. Hoes are on every corner. Proverbs 30 women are at home. Did you catch that? Proverbs 31 woman has standards. I want to submit that's part of our problem today is, and why we demise is, you know, some people can't handle the, uh, the plethora of opportunity that is before them, and so they just pick and choose and dip and dab and, because we live in a day and people don't have standards. Can I just be real? People don't have standards. It used to be back in the day that, you know, a man, he had to come to the house. Amen. Wouldn't no Negro blowing no home. Hello, somebody. Blow the horn, you might get shot. But get your butt out, walk up to the door. Knock on the door, ring the door back. And you're gonna have to put a handle on some stuff and say, yes, man, how you doing? Right. Hello, somebody. You couldn't just blow no on and somebody come running out the door. Yes, nothing happened, you blew the horn. 
that was gonna help you out anyway. If we living in a day and age, man, they see him coming around the corner. I look like they on the way. Don't even lock the door, just run on out. When they say bye, they halfway down the sidewalk. Somebody say, we need some standards. We gotta get some standards. Like back in the day, back in the day, back in the day, if a woman had a man uh, on her side, on her arm, she didn't have to get the door. Proverbs 31 woman know you gonna get the door. They might walk up to the door, but then they gonna turn around to the side. I'm gonna help some brother out. That's your hit to get the door, brother. Some young men didn't know that I had to teach them that. So that's your clue, get the door, dummy. We got to go back and get the standards. They work, they hold the family together, they nurture and train people. You, that's the way we came up. You just didn't, you know, she get the door for him. That wasn't happening. A Proverbs 31 woman said, now here's the way this is gonna go down. And even if you was a little slow, they gonna teach you. You stand at the door long enough, you gonna figure out you need to open it. And they don't mind standing up just looking at you. They say, well, I'm just training him. To help get him there. Amen. Amen. And, and, and those standards make a difference. Don't tell me I was a pastor. You just old foggy. You. you just old. Look at where we are. Maybe we'd be in better shape if we went back and got some of that stuff. But you say, well, that just sound old. Can she get the door? She got two hands. I got to do this. Your job, get the door. Grab the door. Treat her like a queen that she is. Hello, somebody. And ladies, you ought to command you be treated like a queen. If you got to go in teach mode after that, go in teach mode. I said, I'm getting ready to teach my man something. I'm going to stand at that next door. He'll figure it out. <laughs> That's why you just don't want to hook up with any and everybody. Because ladies, if you got the right man, you can hold him accountable. He don't mind. Because a man who's going somewhere that's got destiny, he wants somebody that's going to hold him accountable. Because he understands now he's going to be better. Them that are jiving, they're going to be better and go to complaining. Did you hear what I said? That's why you need to get rid of your boyfriend. And you can't now just be real with him and hold him accountable that he ain't trying to be better. He just jiving. He wasting your time and his time and God can't bless you with the man he needs to bless you with if you got some obstacle in the way. So just go home today and announce to him, I got a word from the Lord, you got the go. If you want to invest in, give him the day CD. Say, so take this, listen to it as you get to your next place of residence. Hello, somebody. Hey, media people, put my card in it. I will take all appointments and meet with them to help the brother out. For free. So he, he's supposed to go down there. And he's supposed to go and he's to look amongst the Israelites to find a wife for Isaac. Now understand this, ladies. See, you know, when you're looking for a spouse for somebody, even the holy hookup team, Sister Green, I see, there's standards. Brothers got standards. Don't believe they don't have standards. Even if they don't tell you they standards, they got standards. I'm gonna let you in on a secret. When the brother man gets ready to get married, there's somebody to be coveted with. He does not want 7-Eleven, VP, Speedway, Rickers. 
There's a warm place that's open 24-7. 365 days. Take that in now, process that. I got some kids in here, so I wanted to clean it up for you. When he gets ready for coming, yeah, he, he wasn't looking for that. He, he's not looking for that. Open 24 7. See, if he's going to the market for somebody to be with in covenant, did y'all catch that? When you're going to the market for something to be in covenant with, think about it. Do you go to the market? For Speedway, <laughs> VP, Rickers, you go there to get something fast that <laughs> Turn to your name and say, neighbor, I think I caught that. You got a different mindset, right? If you go, if you go to a Magas or Marsh, you got a different mindset than when you pull up the Speedway. You all right? It's probably a little different, isn't it? It's all right. Man. Cool, man. Stay cool, man. I love you, man. Be in this together. Now, sisters, you've got to understand that. When he's looking for covenant, something he's going to spend the rest of his life with. See, there's a difference between one night and life. Did y'all hear me? Whole different mindset. There's a difference between Speedway and Kroger's. Different mindset. When you pull up, you got a whole different mindset. Amen. See, if I'm pulling up and you trying to pick up something fast and easy, that's why they jump right in the car. Move on, y'all. You're stuck there. Move to the next verse. There still, some people got that. Other people still thinking about it. He said, "Then, then is what happened. Then, then he prayed. He said, Lord God of Master Abraham, make me successful today. And show me kindness to my master Abraham. The servant Eleazar begins to say, Man, God, I need you to do this thing because really we want your will to be done, not our own will. Next verse. Next verse. Then the Bible says, May it be that when I say to a young woman, Please let down your jar that I may have a drink, and she says, Drink. And, and I'll water your camels too. That's significant. Let her be the one that's going to be Isaac's wife. The sign that, he's, that he asked God for is that God, when the woman comes out to the well, one, she offers me water, but more significantly, she wants to water the camels. Well, now what's significant about that is because camels require 20 gallons of water. That's a real sign. There's one thing I'm just going to get this man a drink. It's another to volunteer to water his camel. My God. So, so he's asking for a serious, a serious sign. A lot of us, we pretend like we're asking for signs and we're jiving. May the Lord just let the day, the sun come up tomorrow. That's a sign I'm supposed to be with him. If you want to take your will and make it God's will. Oh, some crazy stuff. People be praying today for some crazy signs. I'd be like, for real? You call that a sign? Now, this is a sign right here. Just saying, Lord, if the sun come up today, or we see, I see the moon tonight, I'm supposed to spend the night with him. No, that ain't no sign. Be nice, buddy. Be nice. Mary, are you nervous? Don't be nervous, man. I'm going to be nice. All right. I'm going to be nice to you, son. All right, man. He says here, I, I want a sign, Lord. I want a for real sign. And a sign that says, you know, she's willing to do this. The Bible says in the next verse, here comes this woman. Here comes this woman in the next verse. And before he had finished praying, Rebecca came out with a jar on her shoulder. Here she comes walking with a jar on her shoulder. Catch this, brother. The woman came, she had, she could shoulder the responsibility of the wife. 
She, she didn't come looking for a sugar daddy. Read your Bible. She just showed up because she got her own purpose, got her own assignment, got it going on by herself. She don't need Isaac. I mean, she's glad that she don't need Isaac. She's showing up, handling her business. Got her jar on her shoulder, if you will. The bucket's on her shoulder, just going about her business, having a great day, walking in the will of God. Ain't looking for somebody to make her somebody. She's like, I already am somebody. I'm just being me, doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Going to get me some water. Did y'all catch that, ladies? See, he don't make you. He joins you. She's just walking along, got, got the bucket, doing what she's supposed to be doing, what God wants her to be at. That's what she's at. Check this out, brother. You, you want a woman. You don't, don't, man, don't get tied to a woman. That, you know, she's just your fan. Don't, don't, don't marry a groupie. I'm going to help us for free. Did you hear what I said? Don't marry a groupie. No, 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 take a deep breath on this. Don't marry somebody you think it just likes what you got right now. Did you hear me? Because people do crazy stuff now. They'll, they'll marry you because you got a nice car. They'll get with you because you got a nice house. That's the wrong person. You need to marry somebody who can see what you're going to be. Stuff you're going to have. Hello, somebody. You don't somebody just your friend because of what you got at the moment. Wrong person. Don't have dream. Don't have aspiration. Can't see to the next level. They blinded. Are, are y'all hearing me in here? Am I helping anybody? I'm helping. Joy don't make me tight. You don't want to get with somebody like that. They need to appreciate, they need to have it going on and appreciate what God is taking you to. If they fall in love with where you are, if something happens, you in trouble. Because they can't see, as a matter of fact, they'll lure you into a state of complacency because they can be comfortable where you are and they don't understand that God has got even more for you and you need to keep pushing forward. Turn your neighbor and say, neighbor, where was Pastor Green? Seven years ago. You don't want to get with somebody like that. They missed the assignment that's on your life. You got to pick up with somebody that's got the, the bucket on their shoulder rolling. Check this out. Brother, you don't need a woman. <sighs> it's going to be heavy. You don't need a woman. Ain't got nothing going on in her life. All she gonna do is come through your cell phone, check your Facebook stuff. She ain't got nothing to do. If she ain't got nothing to do, you got the wrong woman. You need a woman that's busy raising some children, got a book to finish, got a business to start. She's going on about her business, and she ain't got time to micromanage you. Cause she got a whole bunch of stuff going on in her own life. If she thinks you crazy, she'll just get rid of you and keep moving. God, our problem is we're so excited about boyfriend and girlfriend that we're no longer excited about marriage. Ooh, I got quiet. I said, we're, uh, this week in USA Today, there was an article about the declaration of marriage, the decline of marriage, the decline of marriage. It started me thinking, I said, man. Now think about it, I don't have no marriages on my calendar. <laughs> what the world? So I was like, yeah. Look at that, I got I gotta renew some vows in December. <laughs> Brother sister here. I was like, I don't have nothing else on my calendar. Marriage is declining. And I thought to myself, now all these members we got, look around here. All these members. How many of y'all single? All single folks, raise your hand. Don't be scared. Make sure you're single. Raise your hand. All these single folks, hey, 
ain't nobody getting mad. That's a problem. We gotta fix this. So the holy hookup committee moving to the top of my priority list. So what's wrong? We're no longer excited about a lifelong journey. We happy about boyfriend and girlfriend. But guess what? When you read your Bible, you don't read about boyfriend and girlfriend. God is concerned about lifelong journey. He's not looking for, in the text, Abraham's not looking for Isaac a girlfriend. He's looking for him to have a... We get scared of that term. Brothers get nervous you bring up marriage. Start sweating. They like being a boyfriend. Sisters, don't let them be a remote control husband. The most of show husband, what's that guys? And they kind of around sometimes they can have more than one woman to be multiple places. But we be, be calling you and telling you what you need to do. Ain't even always with you, but they want to operate remote. If you got a remote control man, get rid of him. Get the, text him right now and say the remote is over. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I hate it, but he's helping me. He's helping me. With you. She's trying to help you because you're single. That's what she's calling. Right, so you don't want one that's remote control. You don't want one with a plantation mentality. I don't want to get into that with y'all. Uh, my time is up. Y'all ain't ready for that. But there's some out there that want to be plantation. But that's not God. Bible said, move on, because you know, they pushing you. You want me to hang out there? No. <laughs> let, me, let me get this in here. The, the woman was very beautiful. I need you to catch this, ladies. The woman was very beautiful and a virgin. And no man ever slept. But she went down to the spring. She's going down the field with the water. Blah, blah, blah. But she went down. Check this out, ladies. <laughs> Even though she's going down, she's beautiful. You gotta understand this. Always, ladies, look your best. You don't have to have designer labels to be beautiful. You can be balling on a budget. And even when you're not on top, look good. Look like God's favor is all over your life. Don't ever let somebody run you in the ground, but it's because you don't went down, you ain't got to look back. Hello, somebody. Because if you, if you, I'm going to say this, some of the brothers ain't going to like it, but I'm going to say it. See, see, if you ain't careful, brother may have you looking crazy and be looking at another woman. The operating you remote control and be over here. So now you need to save some money. Don't get your head done. Leave your nails alone. Be over here with the one with the weave in her head. Got fake nails stuck out the thing. And her makeup ain't even on right. You over here looking homie. Praying he'll come back. He ain't coming to see you till the first of the month.
Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, be crowning today. Even though she was going down, the Bible says she looked good. And check this out. Check this out, lady. And she was still a virgin. Just because she went down didn't make her become available. Officer Rogers, did you catch that? Because sometimes when people are going down, they got a tendency to compromise. But I just had to do what I had to do, Pastor. No, man. When you're a Proverbs 31 woman, you're a woman of value, understand that your value is for life, not for a night. Understand who, who God made you to be. Understand he will take care of you. Do not compromise. Hello, somebody. To somebody that's driving. Understand you got standards and maintain the standards. Amen. You ain't got to compromise because you ain't on top of the mountain today. If you can see where you're going, you just understand. Let me just do my thing. And everything going to be all right. Because God's going to work it out. Can I get a witness in here? I'm done back there. Yes, yeah, yeah, they say I'm done. The media business said I'm done. But let me say this to you. Because I went with you the last couple of Sundays. Give me, can I get three minutes? I need three minutes. 11, 22, I got to be done. 11, 25. Let me tell you why this was successful, why this worked. This was the woman, the right woman for, for Isaac. It's because Rebecca, her name in the Hebrew means bind. It means bind. The Bible teaches us whatever you bind on earth. Bound in heaven. And she, she, the reason that God chose Rebecca is because she's uh, she's able to bind stuff. And remember now, he's in uh, cursed territory. He, he's living in a land that's not Jewish. He's living in a land where there are heathens, and he's living in, in an environment where the demons are all around him. And, and what what Isaac need was a woman who could bind some stuff. I think I just said something in here. She, she, she had the ability that she could bind some stuff. And I came by on today to let somebody know that, that they, they, you, you need to look at your own uh, children. And for real, do they need somebody that's associated with spiritual warfare and able to bind some stuff? You gotta be honest about what their environment is, who's around them, who their friends are, who the family is, what kind of family culture is. And most of us, if we're truth be told, we need somebody around us who knows something about spiritual warfare. Who can stand in the gap for your child, who can stand in the gap for your son, and can stand in the gap for your daughter. Somebody that can bind some stuff. Well, I came by, I got one more minute. I came by to let somebody know today, it's time for us to quit playing and go to praying. And what you need to pray for is for that son, that daughter, that they get with somebody who knows something about spiritual warfare, that can bind some stuff. Now, in order for that to happen, you need to have enough faith in God yourself that you can pray and bind some stuff. Where are my Rebecca's at today? I need my Rebecca's to get on their feet because you know it's in your spirit. You know something about spiritual warfare. You just believe in your sanctified heart that at the name of Jesus, you can bind some forces. Can I get a witness in here today? I need my Rebecca's to get it in your mind and in your spirit that you are able to buy some stuff. I came by today to let this city know that God is up to something. The men are going to a whole new level. And the reason why is there's going to be some Rebecca's that's going to be binding demonic forces. Do y'all hear me in here? Yeah. I see some of y'all. You're saying you believe in prayer. Do you believe that you can bind 
The enemy's assignment in the name of Jesus. If you believe that tonight, why don't you open your mouth and say, in the name of Jesus, I find the enemy's assignment. If you believe tonight that you got power to find the devil's plan for your child's life, open your mouth and say, in the name of Jesus, What the enemy thought was going to be his plan. We need to start praying. As if we bind, yeah, health issues over our children. We bind anger problems over our children. We bind addictions over our children. We bind hatred and hurt. A painful past of our children. We claim in the name of Jesus that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Anybody believe that today? Anybody in here who still believe that God, yes, He can. We can bind every demonic imp in the name of Jesus. And every warlock in the name of Jesus, I cried. Every adversary to the Lord's will in the name of Jesus, I cried. Every spirit that's not like God in the name of Jesus, I decree you're gonna be the head and not the tail. You're gonna be up and not down. As I'm able to please stand right now, God speaking to your heart, I need you to come. It's time to get closer to God than you've ever been before. Most of us are in an environment that's Canaan, and we need God to keep us. And
Thank you for listening to Purpose of Life Ministries. We hope you enjoy the message. If you would like a copy of this sermon, call our office at 317-925-0335 or visit our website, www.purposeoflifeministries.com. If you're in the Indianapolis area, we would love for you to visit one of our three services on Sunday at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., or noon. We're located at 3705 Kessler Boulevard North Drive in Indianapolis. 